Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Lacey Johnson Podcast. Uh, we, we're kind of an eclectic variety show, I guess. Uh, different topics, different guests, different subject areas. I'm kind of an eclectic person. I'm interested in everything, in and everything. And so we tend to delve into those on the show. Uh, this evening, uh, our guest is going to be Cindy Vavra. Uh, Cindy is involved with a new piece of exercise equipment uh, that they've patented to help with our balance. Uh, she's working with uh, professional teams. She's working with the military. I understand this balance machine, that uh, ex- piece of equipment that she has uh, can be useful for uh, treating concussions and those type of things. So we will have Cindy on here to give us an update on our uh, entrepreneurial journey, on her fitness journey. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about some things you can do with the upcoming New Year's to improve your health and things like that. But before we go on, uh, first of all, uh, uh, go to LaceyJohnson.com, subscribe to my podcast, click the bell for so you can get notification when new materials drop, uh, visit our souvenir stores, and just explore the website and support the program uh, as we try to bring you something a little different. Uh, the trick is is trying to bring people together. You don't, you're not too popular trying to bring people together nowadays uh, to get things done. But I'm, I'm a person who like to get things done. I don't, I get no satisfaction out of being right, but ineffective. And so I like to be an effective here. So if you want to join us in what we're trying to do, please support the program. Now, finally, after. Two or so weeks, the family is getting uh, healing from this whole cold flu season, respiratory diseases. The most important thing is my uh, young uh, grandson is feeling a lot better. Uh, he had some vicious respiratory issues earlier and uh, really bothered me for a while there. So that's over. And we're moving in, into the Christmas season, Hanukkah season. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope you... Uh, Everything's going well. You got all your planning out of the way. You're enjoying the season. Uh, uh, And uh, you got some good plans uh, for your family coming up. Uh, Now, one last thing. Uh, Every once in a while, I'll say something on the show. Now, I run into someone who's heard it, and they challenge me on it. Uh, Long story short, uh, last week, I said something perhaps counterintuitive to a lot of people. I said... uh, We need to bring back the draft to bring the country back together. And some people reminded me that uh, uh, they don't think of togetherness when they think of the military. Uh, But where I was going with that, and yes, Eisenhower, President Eisenhower warned us of the military-industrial complex. As I mentioned earlier, they said he had included the politicians in that (laughs) comment, er, quote, earlier, but he decided, someone convinced him to take it out. But uh, uh, bottom line is, is even though the military, uh, that whole complex is probably not good, what the draft does, it says we're all in this together. It says nobody's special. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how little money you got. I don't care the color of your skin, your religion, sexual press. We don't care all that. We're Americans, and we're going to draft all of you. And it brings you together. But just as importantly as that, there are a few places in today's world where a little poor uh, kid from the south side of Chicago can meet a country kid from Mississippi. You meet, that's where you meet at. You meet in the military, you meet sports team, and you meet in the corporate world. And the great thing about it, when we get to know people as individual, which is that we do, we we uh, stop dealing in stereotypes. We stop dealing with, well, at least we reduced our dealing in stereotype. We reduce our dealing in group ID. We get to know people as individuals. I tell everyone, even when I was growing up down south during the civil rights movement, that was some horrible things, being on television and things like that, racist and stuff like that. But what kept me balanced in my perspective is I was working around individual white people, Jewish people uh, on a daily basis. So I knew that in every last one of them was respectful 
towards me. So I knew that what I was seeing on TV was just part of the picture. And I think, and getting back to the draft, I'll wrap this up. That's what the draft does. You get to meet people from all over the country. And, and you see that they are not just a caricature that's uh, played in the mainstream media. And then one last thing, and once again, I'll probably get some comments on this. I'm also in favor of everybody paying taxes. Uh, I don't care how poor you are. I think you should send a dollar in, uh, write out a check for a dollar and send it to the government. And once again, that will have people thinking we're all in this together and we're not divided. I think uh, last I heard, uh, 50% of the people somewhere, 45 to 50% of the people, something like that, don't pay any taxes at all. And I don't have a problem with that, but require them to send a dollar check to the government or something like that. And then finally, uh, I don't know how we do it, but uh, I'm in favor of uh, the military being an option of uh, retribution or punishment or whatever for a young men uh, who's out there shooting up the streets, gang banging, and don't creating a lot of violence. Let them go in there. You think you're bad. Uh, go in there and deal with a Navy SEAL or something like that and learn the proper use of gun and learn the proper respect for it. And just, it changes your view. And the reason I know it changed your view, because that's what we did with young men where I was growing up who was kind of difficult to hound. They went off to the service and came back better men. So we might want to think about that as a country. So those are the three things uh, I want to talk about. Uh, basically, the draft bringing uh, uh, us together, uh, everybody paying taxes, and then uh, having the military as an option for these young men who seem like they don't know how to act and think they are bad and with guns and things. Send them in, at least teach them how to use it. And so at least when they start shooting, they won't be shooting innocent bystanders. Uh, I don't want to uh, end the program, uh, begin the program on that bad note. So uh, let's think positive. We got Cindy coming up. Uh, she's going to talk to us about all the great things as far as our exercise and uh, our, our health and things like that. And we get off to a good start. And then uh, next week, uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, what's come, going on uh, after New Year's. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, stay tuned for Cindy. Uh, good evening, Cindy. How you doing? Hi, Lacey. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to talk with you again. Uh, we talked, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. And yeah. about your great uh, physical uh, exercise invention. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And uh, your different exercise program you offer there. And we talked about a little bit about your family and your attitude and all those great things. So this is just a continuation, just a quick check in and say, how's Cindy been doing and uh, how's the business been doing? And we'll take it from there. So how has okay. Cindy been doing? And we haven't talked in yeah. a year or so. How has Cindy been I've, doing? I've been doing well. Life is busy, but life is good. Um, yeah, every day I wake up and fun things, good things to look forward to. Uh, so yeah, life is good. Okay. And how's your, the world of entrepreneurship? I know it's a very tough, challenging world that we mm -hmm. can be in sometime. How has that been going? And well, tell the audience about your, um, I think you got a patent on it. I think your invention yes. that you have out there. Tell the audience yes. a little bit about it and how it's related to just staying in good physical shape. Yeah, so we've created what we call an instability balance training system for health and human performance. So it's it's all the way for, uh, like you said, for exercise. Um, it's, it's balance training. So it's for anyone who needs to improve their balance. And that could be anyone from a young athlete up to an aging adult. Um, balance is so important for all of us in all stages of life. You know, for athletes, um, they definitely need balance and core strength. And just for us, for functional daily living, you know, um, we really stress the importance of single leg balance. Physicians are actually doing a 10 second single leg balance test now to predict longevity and quality of life. So, um, and it sounds easy, but try standing on one leg for 10 seconds and, and it's not that easy. Yeah. And Cindy, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. So heads up. Uh, explain on a high level, 
the physiology of balance. What's what's all involved in our bodies that uh, keep us balanced? And yeah, and then balance. how does your invention uh, relate to those different functions? Yeah, balance is very neuromuscular. So it actually, um, when you take steps, when you're, you know, walking, running, um, going upstairs, um, you get feedback from your feet up to your brain. So it's very, you know, our bodies are very connected. It's very neuromuscular. So it's that um, biofeedback up to our brain. Um, that's what creates the balance. Um, there's a lot of other, you know, physiological uh, terms that I could be throwing in there too. But, but basically, it's the mind-body connection um, for balance. And so what we've done is created devices, a progressive series of devices um, that when you stand on them, it kind of mimics the same effect as walking on a slippery surface or uneven sidewalks, rough terrains or running, um, but in a controlled environment. So standing on our devices, it challenges your balance because uh, what they are is our air-filled spheres or bladders with a rotational top platform so that combination, when you stand on it, um, you, you're very unstable, you know, unless you've got really good balance to start with, but you're very unstable. So that challenges your neuromuscular system to help improve it. So are we creating muscle memory uh, when we're exercising on mm -hmm. your platform? And, yes, and, yes. Okay. Okay. So it and, does a couple of things. It does improve mm -hmm. balance, but it also improves um all of the muscles and ligaments surrounding your joints so it can help to strengthen your joints, especially those most prone to injuries like ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. Yeah, as some people in our audience know, I went through some rehab myself. I mean, I had to learn to walk all over again and, and get my balance back and everything. So we'll talk about that uh, uh, later on in the show because I'm looking for some um, equipment, uh, exercise mm -hmm. routine to help me uh, get my strength back and everything yeah. else. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, another kind of curveball here, Cindy, and I say it's a curveball because I haven't mentioned I was going to talk to you about this, but give me an idea of how you came up with this invention. Were you just walking around one day and said, I mm -hmm. need something to improve my balance, or were you sitting down on that dinner over a glass of wine and the bubbly reminded mm -hmm. you of some bubbles you could put in this equipment to help with the balance? <laughs> How did that all come about, Cindy? Well, I love I loved the bubble co uh, correlation, but it didn't quite happen that way. Um, I was working out in my condo gym. Um, this was about uh, 10 years ago. I was looking at getting into fitness. I started getting into fitness about 12 years ago. I've always been really passionate about it, but I wanted to um, change careers and get into fitness as my career. And I was working out in my condo gym and there was a gentleman there, a personal trainer who was working with clients and he had some very, very rough prototypes of devices that he was using. And I was uh, really curious about them. So I started talking with them and he showed them to me. I started playing with them. Um, so they were yeah, rough prototypes of what we now have today. But he told me he wanted to turn it into a company. So um, I came on board as an investor and then became very involved over the course of years, very involved with the company, um, more so than just an invest investor. So we could move the company forward and do a lot of research and development to uh, perfect the products and do branding and then obtain the, the patents and, and, um, and other things. Yeah. So uh, tell us the name of the company that you are uh, marketing, selling uh, this uh, piece of equipment. Uh, under and how if people in our audience are interested in improving their balance using your equipment, uh, how would yeah, they so get more they information on it? Okay, well, our company name is Zesa, Z-E-S-A, and it means balance in the language of Sanskrit. Um, we've been selling our devices, our pre-production devices that we've been creating for market validation and customer feedback. We've been selling those. We started with the pro teams because we knew of pro athletes were using them and others would take notice as well. So we've sold to uh, 25 professional sports teams, including our local Minnesota Vikings, Twins, uh, Timberwolves, and Lynx. And then um, from there, we've sold to independent pro trainers, pro athletes, uh, physical therapists, chiropractors, people for in-home fitness, 
you know, a wide range of, of people just to get that market validation and customer feedback. So we've achieved that now and we're in the process of moving into high volume production. So we do have an investment opportunity that's out there to invest in our company um, as we close on our funding round to purchase the tooling to move into that high volume. Uh, but in the meantime, for somebody who's interested about our products, they can look at our website. It's called zasafitness.com, all one word, Zesa Fitness. And there's also um, a form on there that they can fill out. So we will notify you when we have products available to sell because we will be selling through our website and other um, other channels as well. Uh, so is this device something I would have to use for the rest of my life to maintain my balance? Or what is something I use until I get my balance and then it's just a maintenance program from there? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly what type of time commitment and how long would it take me before I can uh, maybe skate and do the twirls like a figure skate or something uh, because of your great device? Yeah working, yeah, working on our devices just two or three times a week for, say, 30 minutes. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do um, with our devices. You can just work on that single leg balance um, to help improve your balance. But for, you know, strength building, um, some cardio effects, things like that, really any exercise that you do standing on the ground, um, you can do on our devices. Uh, I do get the question from a lot of people, well, why wouldn't I just stand on the ground and do my, my workouts? Why would I stand on your devices? And I tell them, you know, just think about standing on the ground You're and doing a bicep curl. You're definitely working your biceps. You're training your muscles, a um, little bit in your core, a little bit in your legs. Now, when you stand on our devices, you're controlling the instability and rotation. Um, so that really amps up all of the muscles in your body and you're, you're getting your heart rate up, you know, boosting your metabolism a little bit but really strengthening those joints um, and your core strength too. Core is so important for balance mm -hmm. as well. It's the epicenter of your body. Yeah. So to, to answer your question, you know, do you have to do it for the rest of your life? No, but you would probably want to. <laughs> it would improve your balance. And then, you know, just a maintenance, you know, a couple of times a week would definitely um, keep your balance improved. Well, a good opportunity to segue into some of my personal stories because you mentioned mm -hmm. core and that's my mm -hmm. biggest challenge. Ah, the core, man. The core. I, I <laughs> work on that. And, and I'm glad to hear that uh, your equipment helps with that. But uh, you probably aware, and I talked to you that I did have some spinal surgery and mm -hmm. I had some surgery to, to remove blood clots and things like that. My body is probably, I say about 85%. So I'm still looking to uh, improve balance, core, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And I'm going to look for you, Cindy, to come up with a great program. And my goal, Cindy, and you should be aware of this, within a year, I'm going to go into the gym and I'm going to make 10 straight three-pointers, three-point shots. Ah. I love that goal. I love that goal. And I bet you're going to do it. I want that to be my goal, yeah. goal at 70 uh, to before yeah. I get 70 and make 10 straight three pointers. I got that from one of my old barbers. He was, he wanted to dunk a ball at 65. So those are the type of, so you're going to help me with that and I'm going to I'm gonna record it and put it on YouTube. It's not yeah. going to be Steph Curry hitting 102 in a row, but it won't be bad for an old guy, you know? That, that so, sounds great. So I'm yeah. warning you that I'll be in touch with you. Uh, so uh, when I talked to you the first time, I think you were out in Utah skiing. Yes. Uh, are you a good, average, or great skier? Uh, Sydney? I'm middle of the road, definitely, definitely middle of the road. I don't, I, I don't get out there to do it enough to become really good at it, but I enjoy it. Um, you know, the physical aspect of it and just being out in the fresh air. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you have any skiing trips coming up? Not this year. No, we've got, uh, we're working on planning uh, or finalizing plans on a sailing trip in February. So uh, a little bit opposite. We're going to be on the ocean instead of the ski slopes this year. Okay. So let's talk briefly about this sailing trip. Uh, mm -hmm. I shared with you for our audience out there that I, 
uh, one of my more memorable times in life was sailing on the English Channel. We fixed us a little picnic basket, and one of the engineers that I was working with over there in Hastings, England, he and his wife, and we went sailing on the English Channel. It got a little choppy oh, there for a while, but yeah. as I told you earlier, I was too young to think of danger. <laughs> <laughs> I was young enough that danger was fun to me. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. We, 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 Nowadays we is a totally different day. <laughs> yeah, once you become a grandpa in the whole life, yes. well, I'm a pa, life changes. Right, uh, so, exactly. So I had a great time sailing. So where are you guys going to be sailing? In the Caribbean? Yeah, we're actually, we've done different areas in the Caribbean. This time we're actually doing the, um, the St. Thomas area, the U.S. Virgin Islands. We're sticking in the U.S. this time. Um, yeah, sailing around. So do you choose a place, uh, a base city, for lack of a better word, uh, and then you just go out each day sailing, you come back in the evening? How does that work for a person who's not used to sailing on too much on the open seas? Yeah, well, we go just go from island to island. You know, we pick locations where the islands are fairly close together. So we'll start from home base, and then we take off. We, we kind of do our own itinerary. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a good friend who's a certified sailor, um, and we go with him every year. So we just choose our own itinerary, hit a different island every day, you know, find a quiet bay to anchor in in the evenings, um, and then dinghy on shore for a while. And then um, hop back on the catamaran, sleep on it, and then take off again the next day. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. And how long is this uh, venture going to last? This one will be a week. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So let's let, let's let's circle back around to your business. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it, and I tell everybody that's the reason most people work nine to five because um, running a business is tough. And I've been pretty much out front and public about. Uh, how some of the recent events here in the Twin Cities has been so anti-business, some of the decisions, Mm -hmm. some of the policies. And that's, you know, just like I was telling some of my friends, just about every dollar that's generated in this country is generated by business. I think at least 76% or something like that. And so we really Mm -hmm. need to respect our business. But I know it's challenging out there. Uh, How's it going? And I'm assuming you're in the fundraising uh, Mm -hmm. phase and you're looking for investors. So give us a general idea of what's going on there. And perhaps there's someone in this audience, because that's the way it works, who might be listening to uh, your story and who's willing to offer help. So just give us an idea of where you are there and and where you're trying to go there. So, yeah, we figured out, you know, like I said, we're, we, we're at the point that our demand was exceeding our supply. So it just made sense to um, take it to the next level. So we're doing a current round of fundraising, um, oper- you know, offering uh, an opportunity to invest within our company for an equity interest. And then those funds will be used to produce the tooling that will take us to the next level with our high volume manufacturing, marketing and sales. Um, From there, we'll launch with sales on our website and other sales channels as well. We're also actively working with the military. And um, and I was just on a meeting with them this morning. They invited us to become a part of a new consortium they've they've, uh, created called the North Carolina Center for Optimizing Military Performance. And they're trying to um, specifically figure out ways to keep our um, active servicemen healthy Um, also our veterans, you know, once they um, are released from service. So we're working with them um, actively to use our devices, um, both to prevent injuries out on the field, um, musculoskeletal injuries, which are soft tissue injuries, such as spraining your ankle or hurting your knee, but um, preventing those injuries and then recovering from injuries if they have been injured out on the field. Also, um, a lot of servicemen suffer from what's called MTBIs or TBIs, um, traumatic brain injuries or concussions. So they're looking for ways to to help those servicemen as well. And our devices um, can also be used in that. They are using instability balance training for concussion recovery. So. Um, and then the, the other aspect is the special ops forces. Uh, those guys are almost impossible to challenge. They're at such a high level, and our higher level devices can um, do that challenge for them. Well, you mentioned that uh, you were working with some pro teams, mm-hmm. professional teams, with yeah. your uh, exercise 
I don't know equipment. I call it that. I'm not a, yeah, right. that works. But but uh, are they? Is the National Football League uh, looking to use it uh, as part of their concussion protocol, for lack of a better word? If you can say, if you have an NDA that says you can't talk about <laughs> it or something. But, uh, uh, yes, yes, I can tell you that they are because, again, you know, our our devices are progressive in series because you wouldn't put someone rehabbing from an injury or surgery or an eight, you know, someone in their 80s who just needs to work on single leg balance on the same devices as you would a pro or extreme athlete or special ops forces. We've got all of those levels of devices and many of the teams buy the different levels um, so they can use them for rehabbing and for things like concussion recovery or for really challenging their elite athletes. Okay. So when I hear of your balancing machine, it, it's, it's there... Is there any danger in me using it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we would start very safe, especially I mean, coming off. That was a major surgery you've had. So, uh, no, our low-level device is uh, is really made for that. And then we okay. have what's called a balance stick, too. So you can have something to, to hold on to. But, yeah, you would start on that very low-level device, so no danger at all. And, okay. um, you know, no jumping, no impact. Um, it's a very, uh, yeah, low-impact low to no impact workout. Now, Cindy, you know we the public, we can find all kinds of ways to creative ways to hurt ourselves on the equipment. But you're saying even in our most creative uh, mood, we can't yeah. find a way to hurt ourselves on that. Right. Well, 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 that's great. Now, if there are people in the audience once again mm -hmm. who is interested in taking a look at your device and and perhaps uh, invested in it, can they go to that website also? Yeah, they can go to our website and find out more information, but I would definitely welcome anybody to reach out directly to me, um, and I can give you my email address. That's just Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, at zasafitness.com. And repeat that, Cindy, for those sure. people who had to run off and find a pen. And, yeah, and, you and bet. They're, they're yelling at their kids now because they keep hiding the pens. <laughs> yeah. right so, they're they're uh, never around when you need them. Yeah, yeah they're never yeah. around when you want one. Uh, but so, repeat that uh, email address again. Sure. It's Cindy, so C-I-N-D-Y, at Zesa Fitness. Zesa is spelled Z like in zebra, E-S as in Sam, A Fitness. That's all one word, dot com. And so I keep hinting at what a challenge it is to start up a business. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back over the last year or so that you've been involved, uh, with this business venture and getting this uh, equipment off the ground, what has been the biggest challenge for you? And uh, both the biggest challenge and the biggest surprise, uh, if it's different for you. Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest challenges was that, you know, the message that's been given out to the public um, about, you know, things you can do to prevent getting ill or getting sick, which is basically stay in your house, you know, don't go out, um, don't go to gyms or fitness health clubs because they're the most dangerous thing yeah. you can do. You know, whereas I believe the message should have been, hey, stay active, daily movement, even if you don't want to go to the gym, you know, you, you don't have to have an expensive gym membership. You can go out for a walk every day, get fresh air. Um, social community is so important too. Um, I follow Dan Butner, who wrote The Blue Zones. He's a local gentleman, you know, about people who live to be over 100 years old um, and very active 100-year-old people. And, you know, those are the keys. Um, daily functional movement um, and eating healthy, of course, is important too, but social interaction as well. So it's been really frustrating for those who are of us in the health and wellness industry to see the messages that were, came across every single day about not doing these things yeah. and, you know, the importance of these things for uh, not only our physical health, but mental health as well. Yeah, well, uh, I, I'm going to uh, limit myself to on the comments on that, but I think we mm -hmm. took uh, yeah. a totally different wrong approach on a lot of this stuff based on my reading yes. for myself and learning for myself and we know mm -hmm. how how distrustful the media mm -hmm. is in conveying things and information that you really need. And uh, we were talking briefly. I said I wasn't going to bring it up, but I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, 
a lot of the stuff that's going on with these young uh, children, I think, mm-hmm. it's related to how we went about uh, handling this pandemic in certain states. And people find it strange. But one of my favorite saying is, germs are good and, and people, yes. because it strengthened my immune system. And yes. as long as it doesn't kill me, I'm okay with it, you know? Yes. And yes. that's the way I was with COVID too. I get it, get over with it and go on by my life mm-hmm. and strengthen my immune system. So a lot of things that we did that might've made sense to a lot of people, if you knew the real science behind it, it really didn't make any sense. And I think we're going to be paying for it. Not only health wise, I was in the hospital mm-hmm. and it's just crazy in these hospitals. Uh, people need to know, I think our medical system is in a crisis mode right now yes. and it's going to get worse. Uh, right. I, and there are people out there dying because it's in a crisis mode. We're not right. covering it. And a right. lot of the crisis mode was created unnecessarily because of our policies. I mean, it's just, just crazy what we're doing. So that's a, enough of my soapbox on that. I think yeah. we just mishandled the co- Well, I know we did. I don't, I, I, yeah. Because I read. Agreed. And I understand Agreed. science, I, you know. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, uh, what are your plans for uh, Zaza going forward, uh, Cindy? Yeah. Um, we just, we want to roll. We want to uh, launch our company globally. So, you know, again, once we have our devices um, available, uh, our inventory supply will be approaching the rest of the pro teams. We stopped at 25 because we thought, okay, it's given us market validation, time to take it to the next level. So continuing with the pro teams, also colleges, uh, universities, high schools, physical therapy, um, and then gyms, you know, small and and big box gyms. Um, And then uh, we will definitely continue to actively be involved with the military as well to get our products into the military for use with by our soldiers. Oh, those are all great. Now, what's in general uh, the marketing plan? Will I see you you start getting emails and texts on this (laughs) great device? Will I see you at midnight when I can't sleep one morning at (laughs) two o'clock in the morning? You're going to come on with this TV commercial or uh, infomercial. Uh, yeah. What's the marketing strategy uh, for this? Oh, and are you going to yeah. use some of the proteins as yes. references? Uh, explain that to me, uh, Cindy. Yes. Kind mm-hmm. of all of the above. We will be selling on our website, especially to uh, direct to consumers who may want to purchase. They can purchase directly on our website. Um, and then we'll also be selling through our social media channels and then through distributorships. Um, those will be the you know selling to the physical therapy centers and the big box gyms. But for in-home consumers, um, you know, following us on social media, um, contacting us uh, via our website and following that. And then uh, we'll be using marketing affiliates, to your point, to strategic partnerships and marketing affiliates. We've already got a pretty stellar list of athletes and others who want to um, help with our marketing and sales. So they'll be coming on board with us. Okay. So when you become uh, rich and famous for what you're doing here, uh, am I going to be able to get in touch with you, Cindy, and all? Or are you yes. going to have uh, my people call your people kind of a thing yeah. there? You're going you're gonna to remember all of us, are, are you not? You know, one of the wonderful things about being uh, in this startup company, um, not running it, but, you know, starting at the lower levels, um, I, I love working one-on-one with, with people and just seeing what our devices do for them. I'm so passionate about our equipment and the way that um, it helps to improve lives. So I know I definitely want that one-on-one contact with people and continuing to work with some people. Okay. Well, we are in the holiday season, so I'm going to try to wrap things up on a couple of items. Uh, First of all, I understand that. What's your, what's your holiday meal plan, Cindy? Uh, uh, you mm-hmm. understand you're a pretty decent cook, I think. Oh, I do like to cook, but yeah, I, I eat fairly healthy. But it is the holiday season, so um, you know, um, we still try to stay somewhat healthy. But um, glass of what? A few glasses of wine with dinner, of course, and uh, you know, yeah, got to have some what, of those fun holiday foods as well. What's the one food indulgence? that you look forward to during the holiday? Cause you got an excuse now. I mean, what's <laughs> one food indulgence you look forward to? You know what? I really love mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I do. That's like my favorite. I like call it my favorite comfort food. Um, aside from that, you know, cheeses. I love wine and cheese, especially red wine with some good cheeses. Um, yeah, that can that can be a full rounded meal for me sometimes. That sounds like a very disciplined mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. who craved mashed potatoes during the holiday season. <laughs> It's been going without all year almost, sound like so. Oh, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, I, I eat them throughout the year too, but I'm proud of that. Uh, mashed potatoes. There are uh, quite a few members in our audience, and rightfully so, look at uh, the new year as a fresh start, mm-hmm. and they want to get healthier, they want to eat healthier, they want to do all these good things, and we all know the challenge of that. Mm-hmm. But uh, leave our audience with just some general advice that you would have. Yeah, I would say, you know, small help. changes, um, okay. you know, incorporate more um, fresh fruits, vegetables into your meals, um, daily activities. Um, it, it can be just be going for a walk around the block or running up and down the stairs, just daily movement, you know, start small and then celebrate those small achievements that you're doing, whether it's, you know, okay, this meal is a little bit healthier or, hey, I, you know, I went out, well, maybe not today because it's nasty and windy out there, but I w- walked around the block twice, you know, celebrate those small things and don't beat yourself up if you, if you, you know, grab those leftover Christmas cookies, things like that. Just celebrate the small achievements and then have a picture in your mind of, of what you want to become and hang on to that picture. Keep visualizing that picture of what you want to become. And, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but keep that vision in your mind. That is great advice. Uh, and I will try to take that advice. I will also mm-hmm. be in touch with uh, you on a program for my rehab and exercise mm-hmm. that helped me once again. Uh, and by the way, if I do not uh, make 10 straight three pointers, Cindy, mm-hmm. it's going to be your fault. I just wanted you to know that. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to I'm up to the challenge. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so thank you for coming back on and updating us on all the great things that's going on with your business and your life. Uh, your grandmother of how many? How many? Three. Yeah. Three. And, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that's so wonderful. Uh, yes, that's the it greatest is. thing. Yeah, that's the greatest mm-hmm. thing you can be as a grandparent. Agreed. And the biggest blessing in life. So, uh, congratulate you on that, and say hi to the family. Enjoy your okay. vacation. We will talk uh, after the first of the year, and we'll get busy. And let's see, can we uh, uh, gather up a few investors for what you're trying to do? And, and get that would be, okay. That'd be wonderful. We're All looking right. forward to it. And thank you, Lacey. Always an honor and privilege yeah, to is. be with you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Have a great evening. Have a great rest of the year. And let's talk after the new year, Cindy. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you.